Are you running a workshop or a presentation and you were trying to figure out whether or not you should use a Zoom meeting or a Zoom webinar? Well, this is a question that I see pop up a lot and there are a few things that you need to consider. So for today, we are going to talk about Zoom meeting versus webinar. What are the things that you need to decide? And I'm going to share the four factors that I consider when I am deciding whether or not I'm going to use a meeting or a webinar. And I have used both and experienced firsthand what I think works and doesn't work. Now, if we have never met before, my name is Kat and I wanna help you create professional and engaging online presentations. I really feel like we owe it to the other person sitting on the other side of the screen to have a better experience. So that's what I'm all about. Now, if you are here live, I would love if you could say hi in the chat. I see we have Edward here. And also let me know, is this a decision that you have had to grapple with before, whether to choose meeting or webinar? Now, before I share the four factors, I do want to do just a really quick rundown. And I'm sure that you are probably a little bit familiar with both options. And maybe you have actually hosted both or you've been on the receiving end as someone who has shown up to one of them. So let's just quickly review, shall we? So on the first side of the house, we have the Zoom meeting. And this is probably used the most where everyone is in the room together. The host is in the room, all of the attendees are in the room. People may or may not have their camera on. It depends on their ability to have their camera on. Sometimes they don't have a strong enough signal or sometimes people just don't wanna turn their camera on. And then there's also an opportunity for people to chat and engage. And there are also breakout rooms. So this is something I use really often. And you can do this with a meeting where you separate people into smaller breakout rooms. And finally, there, another thing that doesn't get used a lot, but it's something that I like to use in a lot of my workshops is a file transfer. And so a file transfer is when you can quickly send, you can turn this option on as a host and send a file to someone. So for example, I love to send instructions of a breakout activity to everyone before I send them to their rooms <laughs> because that way they can look at that file and know exactly what is expected of them in that breakout. Now, if we switch over and consider the webinar. So the webinar is where you are just seeing either the hosts or the panelists. They're the only people who are on the screen. Everyone else is attending sort of in a listen and watch only mode. They do not have their own window. And so this is really separating out the speakers from those who are attending, whether that's host and panelists. And there is an option to integrate payment. So if you are having a paid workshop, Zoom allows you to actually integrate that directly into having that webinar, which is not available on meetings. You can have registration for meetings, but you can't have the payment integration. And then finally, you do have to add this on. If you have a Zoom account, you have to pay extra to have the webinar feature because there are a few other elements like the payment integration, like that extra level of a control. Those come with that webinar. And so that's something that is a little bit different. Now, those are some of the key differences. I would love to hear from you, whether you are here now or if you're watching the replay, what is your preferred as an attendee? If you are actually showing up to one, do you have one that you like? I know for those of us who maybe are a little bit more withdrawn or shy, maybe we prefer the webinar, but if you are someone who wants to engage and talk, even if you are shy though, you might prefer the meeting because there is that extra level, which we will talk about in a moment. So I said that I was going to share my factors that I use. And there are four that I'm going to cover and I'm actually, we're gonna do a side by side. And so this is what I think about when I am trying to decide which is the format that I think is going to be right for me if I am holding a workshop. Now for some background, the majority of my workshops are held with intact teams. For example, a corporate team or a group that works together, maybe everyone in a department. That's the type of group I typically work with. Although I have worked with disparate groups who are spread out all over, they don't actually know each other, and I try to take that into account. So let's look at the comparison. We have meeting and webinar, and these are the four factors that I like to consider. So the first is engagement, which I see Edward has, has put in the chat here that, yeah, you want interaction and engagement, and sometimes that really is necessary for the type of content that you are delivering. So for engagement, it can be much higher in a meeting than it can in a webinar. Now, this doesn't mean that there is no engagement 
in a webinar because you can. And I have attended some myself and have hosted webinars where there is that level of engagement. Maybe you are using the poll option, which is available in both the meeting and the webinar. Maybe you are having that question and answer period. And you can also bring people up, promote an attendee to a panelist and bring them on the stage. So it doesn't mean that you can't have engagement, but it is lower and you strip away some of those options like having a breakout room. The next factor I consider is the user experience. So the way that I think about this is if you are in a meeting, you're on the inside. And if you are in a webinar, you're on the outside if you are an attendee. So it's similar to thinking of going to a conference, walking into a room where it's a keynote speaker and it's just a, a lecture style where they're on the stage and you are sitting there watching them. Maybe there's a microphone in the middle of the aisle that allows people to go up and ask questions to the speaker, but that's sort of that level of engagement. You are watching from the outside. Whereas if you were to be at a conference where there was a more interactive workshop with the speaker, maybe you're all sitting in a circle together. That's where you feel like you're on the inside. Even if it's a big circle and you don't have a chance to ask a question, the speaker's in the circle. You kind of have that, that feeling of, oh wow, I'm really with this person. There's that extra level of access, which is really exciting. Now, the third factor is real time feedback. And this is the feedback, usually it's nonverbal. And this is a lot higher in a meeting because you can see people's faces for the most part. And you can also have those reaction buttons. There are different things you can do in a meeting that you don't necessarily do when you are in the webinar. So it is much lower. There is a chat feature, there's a question feature. You can bring people up, but really you're not getting that feedback of, are people understanding this? Are they following along? You know, I like to ask people for a thumbs up <laughs> in my workshops, if they can see the screen share or the slides, or if they understand instructions, I immediately get nonverbal feedback and it's a tool for engagement with my audience. And then finally, the last consideration is control. Sometimes we need a higher level of control, which is not as easy to do with the meeting. It is much easier to have that level of control if you are in a webinar setting. And that is where it's easier to control what are people doing on camera. So if you were in a meeting, people might be putting up distractions, they're walking around with their, with their camera. The, all sorts of things can happen in a meeting that's a little bit harder to control. Doesn't mean that you can't bring people in, but on the whole, there is more control with that webinar. So really you have to think about those four different considerations, or I consider those four factors. Let me know in the chat or in the comments, are there factors that you consider that I haven't mentioned? Because I'm sure there are more, but those are the ones that I really think about when I am planning in advance for what is the best format for me to use. Now, I usually then start to ask myself some questions and I do try to think about a specific order. So the very first thing I think about is what is the format? Does this work? How is this session best run? Because there are examples where I really want the people in that group to be working with the material. So I want them to actually start to process what they are learning and make sure that they're understanding it at that deeper level. Instead of just listening and hearing all the information, I want them to, for example, go into a breakout room, have a discussion. Having that extra level of engagement is a really great tool for making sure that people are not only hearing what you're saying, they're understanding it, and then maybe they can actually apply it. And for that higher level of engagement, typically I'm leaning towards a meeting. Now, the next question that you might wanna ask, and I ask in this order, does the chance to be quote unquote in the room make a difference? This is that inside outside feeling. So perhaps you want people to feel like, oh, this is extra special. Now, a personal example is that I am actively learning about the Enneagram personality framework. It's something I run workshops on, but I'm continuing to learn myself. And I have sort of my favorite teacher and I have attended both a webinar format and a meeting format with this teacher. And there's a difference when we're in the meeting format where I feel like, okay, we're actually together with this world renowned teacher. It feels more special to me versus when it's a webinar and I'm just kind of sitting back and hearing it, it's still valuable. I still appreciate it, but there is that different level of experience for me as the user. So that's something I always like to think about. Does that added element, that access or being in the room, 
make a difference for what you are doing. The next one is what is the group? So if they are an intact team, meaning they already know each other, they have some degree of knowledge, or they're all from the same organization or place. So there's that level of familiarity that will sometimes matter when it comes to turning on a camera or not. Whereas if you are bringing a group of individuals who do not know each other, maybe it's more intimidating. People perhaps won't attend a meeting if they think, I don't know any of these people. I don't want to turn on my camera or chat or engage, or they'll just kind of sit quietly back and that will affect their experience. So there may be options where perhaps in that case, it is better to go with a webinar if everybody's disconnected and you don't need that engagement. So always go engagement first, in my opinion, and then you want to work your way down to ask these other questions. The next one, does this nonverbal feedback, that real-time feedback matter for this session? Maybe you just have to communicate something to an audience and you don't necessarily need to know that they are really deeply engaging with the material, but it is a communication that has to happen. Doing a webinar format is just fine for getting that information out there. And again, a lot of people most of the time provide some sort of replay so that they can access that later if they need to watch it back. However, if you are doing, say, a training where it actually really matters for you to know that they are getting this, they're interpreting the information that you're giving or that you need to make sure that people are engaging with one another in order to analyze or really work with this material, you're probably going to want to go with that meeting format. And how much control? So do you need to really make sure that every single person is laser focused on the speakers, whether that's one host or a panel and is not distracted by others? Well, then you're probably gonna to wanna to consider doing something more like that webinar. But as I said before, you actually do have a little bit more control over meetings than you might initially think. If you haven't played around with the host preferences in your Zoom settings, you'll see you can do things like turn off chat completely, and then that way people aren't chatting with one another. You can actually have it so that you can hide non-video participants. So sometimes you sign into a Zoom meeting and you see this big screen of all of these black squares with people's names or their picture, and that can just look a little messy. You can actually have that option to hide all of those non-video participants. So only the people who have their cameras on are the ones who are showing up. It can really clean up the look. And there are other controls that you can have around muting, unmuting, et cetera. So there, there are options for you. Also having a co-host who can help bring in that extra element of control. So don't think that you can only control your environment with a webinar versus a meeting because there are options for both, but sometimes we really want that laser focus and to kind of zero in. And that's where you would probably want to go more so with a webinar. So those are the questions that I ask in order to make that decision. And those are the factors I really do think about engagement. For me, with having that facilitation background, I want people to learn. I wanna make sure that they're understanding it. So I'm gonna use as many tools as I can for the different types of learners that are involved in my session. So my first question is always around engagement and what am I trying to accomplish out of this session? And then how can I support that with the feature? Instead of the opposite, which is just kind of thinking, well, I know how to run a meeting, so I'm just gonna do that. So really think about what's your objective, what are you trying to get out of it, and also what is your teaching style. There are all sorts of things that you can ask. But again, this is not an exhaustive list, so in the comments, let me know if there's anything else that you consider that maybe I'm missing. I would love to hear from you. And if you are making this decision, I want to wish you the best of luck and a great experience leading your session.